the bird flu. Suddenly we're hearing about it all the time. However, avian influenza is not a new disease state. We've known about it since 1997. So why the sudden concern? Well, the reason is twofold. First of all, this is the worst epidemic of an avian influenza that this country has ever seen. And we're not alone. This is a global phenomenon. But since first identified in 2021, we have lost 52 million chickens, basically decimating the poultry industry, 6,200 other forms of wildlife, and the recent introduction into the mammal population, specifically bears, cows, and human beings. This also concerned for a population of seals that was found dead in Maine. 150 seals tested positive for avian influenza. However, they were all found dead in one congested area, which makes one believe that they weren't individually infected by coming across an infected bird. Instead, they probably passed it on to each other, which is extremely concerning because currently you might get human spread, but you don't get human to human spread. And if this virus, which already obviously mutated, mutated again, except this time allowed for human to human spread, we might be dealing with another public health emergency. There is good news though. In 1997, if a human being was infected with that avian influenza, an adult had a 50% mortality and remarkably children under 12 sprung up to 90% mortality, highly unusual for an influenza move up to today, we're finding that this current influenza only affected 67 people, all of which were farm workers actively involved in the poultry industry. And of those 67, only one expired, which means that we've gone to a mortality rate of about 1.5%. It's most likely either due to the fact that maybe over these last 20 plus years, we were exposed to more variants of viral influenza and we have somewhat more of an immunity to it, or the initial virus has mutated to the point where it's not nearly as virulent and potent as it was back in 1997. But that's very good news. Furthermore, while avian influenza is highly contagious in the bird population, it's relatively difficult for a human to become infected. Normal seasonal influenza is spread by droplets. Somebody coughs or sneezes, spewing viral particles into the air, and you either walk into it or breathe it in, and you become infected. Avian influenza doesn't work that way. Humans become infected when they have contact with viral-loaded secretions from a dead or sick animal. Then they take those secretions and either rub them into their eyes or touch their lips and their mouth. Should you be exposed to avian influenza, the incubation period is very similar to human influenza. Usually somewhere between seven and 14 days, you're gonna exhibit symptoms. And the symptoms are gonna be a little different than the standard seasonal influenza. 93% of the people who are infected developed conjunctivitis. In other words, pink eye or reddening of the eye. And that might be related to the root of infection being that you've rubbed the viral particles into your eye. But conjunctivitis is not part of the normal seasonal influenza presentation. The other presenting symptoms are the same. Body aches, chills, fever, sweats, headaches, eye aches, possibly nausea and vomiting. You might also develop a shortness of breath with both of them. The complications are also very similar, developing a pneumonia, which can become a life-threatening illness. You've also likely heard this known as the H5N1 virus. But what does that mean? Well, basically, when we look at influenza viruses, we classify them by two proteins that are spike proteins on their surface. The first one, is known as the hemagglutinin, H. And there's 18 varieties of the hemagglutinin. And then we have the neuramidase, the N. And there's 11 varieties of the neuramidase. 
And you can see with some simple math, if you start to blend these all together, you'll get just under 200 different combinations, meaning you will basically have just under 200 different influenza viruses. Now you might wonder, well, if this virus was so species specific, how did it go from supposed to be infecting birds to suddenly being able to infect all these other animals? Well, that comes from mutations into how it develops and how it reproduces when in the host. Let's get into that. We're dealing with a single-stranded, simple RNA virus. Now, remember I told you about the hemagglutinin and the neuramidase. Well, they have a little sinister profile behind them. The H tricks your body into thinking this virus is okay and it allows it to enter the cell. Once it's in the cell, the neuramidase not only helps it into the cell, but it helps integrate it into your ribosome, allowing you to create more of these viral particles. It basically tells your cell to stop making whatever protein it's making and start making me, the influenza virus. Now, being a simple single-stranded RNA virus, when it replicates, and we could see here, it's replicating very rapidly and continuously. Well, its genetic sequence could suddenly become wrong and it won't get detected. Double-stranded DNA has mechanisms in there, a series of checks and balances, that if a gene sequence happens to go in wrong, it'll stop, clip it out, and replace it with the proper sequence. RNA viruses don't do that which means that you've now had something called the antigenic drift. In other words, the virus is slightly different than it was when it came into the cell. We see in this graphic here, here's the H particle or the hemagglutinin. It's a yellow triangle. But when it's done replicating in the cell, it's not a yellow triangle anymore. It's half of a triangle. So it's basically the original hemagglutinin that's changed a little bit. So it is indeed a new variant of that virus. However, it's probably not gonna have a big clinical difference because it's just a little bit off. When we deal with something called an antigenic shift, that's a major change. And that's what allows it to suddenly cross species. The way that works is, you have two viruses simultaneously getting into the cell. So we might have two different influenza viruses in the cell and they start intermingling their genetic material and out comes a new virus completely different than the first two. And that new virus has the potential of being so new that your immune system just doesn't know how to deal with it and it could cause overwhelming disease which is what often happens when we have a major antigenic shift. So if you think you were contaminated with avian flu, what do you do? Well, the first thing to do would be to get tested and tell your tester that you think you had an exposure to the avian flu. This way they could send your sample off to a specialized lab and see, does it have the genetic material of this H5N1 avian influenza? The treatment for it is going to be supportive, just like a regular influenza, with the possible addition of an antiviral like Tamiflu, which might be able to ward off the more severe complications. Having mentioned that cows and chickens have been involved, there's a lot of people asking me, can I get it from eating eggs or can I get it from drinking milk? The answer is, a properly cooked egg will not be able to transmit avian influenza and pasteurized milk would not be able to transmit avian influenza in an infected cow. In closing, the best thing to do would be common sense avoidance. Avoid situations that could put you around a lot of wild birds. And if you do end up in that situation, or you do think you've been exposed, wash off immediately. And if you're walking in a marshy area that might have a lot of ducks and geese, make sure to properly decontaminate your shoes because the virus could last on footwear for quite a while. And finally, consider getting an influenza vaccine. 
Now, the flu vaccine is not going to prevent you from getting avian influenza, but it can prevent you from getting the normal seasonal flu, which means that you reduce the risk of that situation where getting two influenzas at the same time, creating a third more powerful influenza, which will basically not only help you, but it will help your community at large. I hope this video gave you some information. I hope it made you feel a little more reassured as to what this avian influenza is and what your risk factors are of getting it and what to do if you think you did contract avian influenza. Take care, have a good day. And if you do like these videos, I wouldn't mind a thumbs up and a subscribe and hit the bell for future videos. Take care.